Casimir started laughing hysterically, which made Emily flinch in fear. You haven't changed all those years, have you? Casimir looked at Emily with contempt. Do you think I care about your opinion? Casimir asked while poking Emily's chest. Emily's face tensed up, and she slapped Casimir's hand away. Keep your hands off me, Emily demanded. When have you ever respected me? Casimir asked, ignoring what she had just said. His body was now pressed tightly against hers. Emily raised her hand to slap Casimir, but he caught her hand before she could do so. Don't try to hit me. I'm stronger than you. Let me go! Emily cried as she glared at Casimir. You look at me now the same way you did when Scarlet first introduced me to you, Casimir said. Back then, Emily and Scarlet were inseparable. Of course, I hated you, Emily looked at Casimir coldly. Scarlet was my best friend, and you were trying to take her away from me. And I felt the same way about you, Casimir said without missing a beat. I've hated you from the first moment I saw you. I hate you from the bottom of my heart. When he was young, he tried to be on good terms with Emily just to please Scarlet. But Emily repaid his efforts by humiliating him. If you can kill me, do so, Emily taunted him. Otherwise, I promise you, one day, I'll make you pay for this. If I killed you, I would go to jail. My life would be ruined, Casimir said rationally. You still like Scarlet, Emily said contemptuously. This is your Achilles heel. You still believe you have a chance with her. But the truth is, you're just a stranger to her. She doesn't even remember you. And she's in love with Oliver Steele. Casimir let go of Emily and walked straight to the window. When he pulled the curtains shut, the room suddenly turned dark. Emily was caressing her wrist. When you like someone, you'll wish that person happiness. Do you think I will snatch Scarlet away from Oliver? Casimir said with disdain. This was the difference between Emily and him. You will hurt her, Emily said. She would not be moved by Casimir's words. His words sounded noble and selfless, but his actions were not. Casimir picked up his clothes from the bed and put them on. He had done what he wanted to do. The show was almost over, so there was no need for him to continue acting. I will never hurt Scarlet. Casimir tidied up the collar of his shirt. His movements were elegant and calm. When did this man become so noble? Yet if it weren't for you, Scarlet would already have control over Sanders holding, Emily said pointedly. How does helping Harold Sanders help Scarlet? I owe Scarlet the answer to that question, not you, Casimir said with a smile. Anyway, you can go now. I won't stop you. Casimir did not want to waste any more time on Emily. He was in a hurry to rush back to the company to convene the board of directors. Emily looked askance at Casimir. She had always felt that he was strange. Why did he restrain her earlier? And why was he now letting her go? I'll hold a board meeting later, Casimir said, interrupting Emily's thoughts. I'll be discussing the situation at Sanders Holding. If you're interested, you can come with me. Casimir invited Emily politely. Emily looked at Casimir thoughtfully. She was wondering if she should go with him. Although she wanted to learn more about Sanders Holding, she loathed spending more time with Casimir. You hate the idea of coming with me, Casimir said, as if he were reading her mind. Emily gritted her teeth, and she forced herself to make the rational decision. Fine, I will come with you. Emily said curtly. But you must remember what you promised me last night. And you must remember what you promised me. Casimir answered back. Don't worry. Your goal has nothing to do with me. Emily said casually. And just like that, the two rivals agreed to a truce. How long would that truce last before Casimir and Emily would be back at each other's throats? When they arrived at VersaCorp, 
Casimir got out of the car and opened the door for Emily in a gentlemanly manner. Compared to how he was an hour ago, he seemed like a completely different person. Director Graves, I'm afraid you're plotting something, Emily said. Are you afraid I'm up to something? Casimir smiled. You're a schemer, Emily said bluntly. Of course I'm worried. Casimir stretched out his arm and signaled Emily to hold it. Emily looked at Casimir strangely. We don't need to do this, do we? Emily bit her lower lip and looked at Casimir warily. His familiarity made her feel strange. I've already told the board of directors that there will be a VIP present during the meeting, Casimir explained. Reluctantly, Emily held onto Casimir's arm. The small dress she was wearing looked a little formal. Those who did not know any better would think that she was going to attend a banquet. When they arrived at the 28th floor, everyone looked at her curiously. Who was this woman holding Director Graves' arm? More than a few women among the attendees gave her sharp and envious looks. Emily was not bothered by any of it. She had gotten used to being the center of attention since she was young. She remained calm and composed as she surveyed the room. I made you wait for a long time. There was a traffic jam on the road, Casimir explained. Although Casimir was the president of VersaCorp, his position was not completely secure yet. He still needed the approval of the senior members of his family. After a while, Markel Halpert, Casimir's assistant, came forward and reminded Casimir, President Graves, everything is ready. We can start now. Emily looked at the assistant. He was young, fresh-faced, and prettier than most girls. In a way, he reminded her of Casimir when he was young. In turn, Michael looked at Emily thoughtfully. He had never seen such a beautiful woman. He thought she was gorgeous and could not help blushing when he looked at her. Would someone like that even notice him? Just as she sat down, Emily whispered to Casimir, Your assistant. What's his name? Michael Halpert. Casimir looked at Emily in puzzlement. He was a little surprised that Emily would be interested in him. The directors looked at Emily and Casimir curiously. Casimir was usually distant. Seeing him whispering to the woman next to him raised many questions in their minds. Who was this woman? Was she in a relationship with Casimir? If so, how would that affect VersaCorp? Michael, who stood beside Casimir, would occasionally steal glances at Emily. One time, his eyes accidentally met Emily's. Emily smiled and nodded to him. Michael's face immediately turned red. Emily could not help covering her mouth and laughing when she saw Michael's reaction. It had been a long time since she saw a guy who seemed so shy and innocent. Casimir was like that once, Emily recalled. She felt a twinge of regret in her heart. Perhaps if she had treated him better back then, he would have turned out differently. Emily looked at Casimir. How did Casimir become the man he is now? Was she the one to blame for his transformation? Or the one to thank? Thinking of how ripped Casimir was now, Emily bit her lips, and an odd thought crossed her mind. Perhaps if Casimir weren't her enemy, she would have fallen in love with him. While Emily listened to Casimir, Michael couldn't stop looking at her. Michael, Casimir said sternly for the second time as he tried to get his assistant's attention. He wasn't used to his reliable assistant being absent-minded. Following Michael's line of sight, Casimir noticed that Michael seemed smitten with Emily. This was not a good sign. Casimir was considering it in his heart. If Michael fell in love with Emily, it might affect his future plans. After all, Michael was not just Casimir's assistant. Though no one at the company knew this, Michael was also Casimir's maternal cousin. Michael was too timid and had issues managing his own affairs. In some way, he reminded Casimir of his younger self. That's why he took him under his wing. He wanted him to grow as a person, but he did not want his cousin to end up like him. Emily looked up at Michael. She had a feeling that Michael and Casimir had a special relationship. She could tell that the young man was not just Casimir's assistant. 
because Casimir did not talk with him the way one normally talks to a subordinate. This piqued Emily's curiosity. Who was Michael Halpert? Was there something to learn here? And would that information be useful to her? Appreciating some of Casimir's qualities did not stop her from scheming against him. I called the board of directors today for an important matter, Casimir declared to the board members. At this point, Emily's attention was pulled back. She looked at Casimir nervously. What was Casimir going to say? As you know, Versacorp has been buying shares in Sanders Holding. However, since that company's shares have continued to drop, our current course is no longer tenable. It is time to pursue a different strategy, Casimir said calmly. After he finished speaking, he glanced at Emily as if he was telling her with his eyes that he was fulfilling his promise. Casimir's words made the board members burst into an uproar. Casimir had been the one who pushed the company to buy shares in Sanders Holding. How could he change his mind all of a sudden? They demanded an explanation. How was Casimir going to justify his actions? Emily sat in silence as she studied the room. She could tell that the board members were not happy with Casimir's announcement, and they were not afraid to show it. This showed her that, contrary to the rumors, Casimir's power within Versacorp was more tenuous than she had imagined. Does anyone know the identity of the lady beside me? Casimir asked abruptly, drawing everyone's attention to Emily. Emily looked at Casimir in confusion. What was he trying to do? This is Miss Emily Foster. Her grandfather is the chairman of Foster Corporation, Casimir said with a smile on the corner of his mouth. Emily maintained her smile as well. She had not expected Casimir to put her on the spot, and that made her nervous. She didn't show it, however. Instead, she pretended to be aware of what was going on, even though she did not know what Casimir was up to. Versacorp has been negotiating with Foster Corporation recently, Casimir announced. Emily looked at Casimir with admiration. Even though he had tricked her, she had to admit the guy was cunning. After the meeting ended, Emily took the initiative to hold Casimir's arm and whispered into his ear, You should thank me for not rejecting your claim. Casimir was also surprised that Emily could work so well with him. Foster Corporation focuses on foreign markets, Casimir pointed out. Don't you want to expand into the U.S. market? Versacorp will help you with that. I'm hesitant about letting Foster Corporation work with Versacorp, as that might put us on a collision course with Steel Enterprises, Emily explained. Big profits require bold moves, Casimir smirked. Anyway, you've been quite helpful today. How about I take you out for lunch? I know a great Japanese restaurant nearby. Neither Emily nor Casimir had breakfast, so they were both hungry. I don't like Japanese cuisine. Let's go out for pasta, Emily said with a smile. Your assistant Michael can also join us. Emily thought that would be a good way to figure out what the deal was between Casimir and Michael. You're showing a lot of interest in my assistant, Casimir frowned. Uh, is there a problem? Emily said innocently. You're the one who wants to thank me. Can I make a small request? Not at all, Casimir said. It's just, I remember you don't like younger guys. People can change, Emily winked. Casimir was certain that Michael was smitten with Emily. Worse yet, Emily seemed to like him as well. If the two got together, he and Emily would technically become family. The thought made Casimir shudder. It's okay, as you wish, Casimir said and called Michael over. Michael was surprised to hear Casimir calling his name. Seeing Emily still there, Michael became flustered. She was so beautiful that he couldn't keep his eyes off her. Let's go for lunch together, Casimir said. We're going to have pasta, Emily said warmly. Hearing Emily talking with such warmth to Michael made him feel a little jealous for some reason. Michael pointed at himself. Are you inviting me? Michael asked in disbelief. Yes, Emily nodded seriously. Do you like pasta? I like it, 
Michael answered a bit too eagerly. He'd eat anything as long as he got to spend time with Emily. Seeing Michael's reaction, Casimir knew that Michael really had feelings for Emily. Then let's go together, Emily said in a coquettish tone, which made Casimir even more annoyed. Emily had never spoken to him like that. A wave of jealousy arose in his heart. His initial concern was Michael's well-being. Now, however, that concern had turned into jealousy. He hated the idea of Emily being intimate with another man. Michael's face was red, as he looked very cute. Emily let go of Casimir and walked straight to Michael's side. She took the initiative to hold Michael's hand as if she was holding a younger brother. Casimir's eyes widened. He seemed livid. On the other hand, Michael seemed like he was on cloud nine. Let's go together, Emily told Michael with a beaming smile. Casimir can catch up with us later. Casimir gritted his teeth. He had not anticipated this turn of events, and he regretted bringing Emily with him to Versacorp. He had a bad feeling that this was not going to end well. Emily and Michael chatted and laughed all the way to the restaurant. Casimir's expression, on the other hand, was dour. The fact that his cousin was getting along so well with Emily irked him. When they arrived at the restaurant, Emily naturally sat next to Michael. The young man was all smiles until he noticed Casimir giving him a dirty look. Afraid of upsetting his older cousin, Michael distanced himself a bit from Emily. He hoped that would be enough to appease him. Um, Miss Foster, it is a very nice restaurant, Michael said a bit too formally. Emily was sure that Michael liked her, but his actions were inconsistent. First, he distanced himself when she sat next to him. Then, he addressed her with excessive formality. Could it be that he misunderstood something? Could it be that he thought she was with Casimir? Emily almost chortled at the thought. Before she could say anything, Casimir pulled up his chair next to hers. Then, he placed his hand on Emily's shoulder. This made Emily's eyes twitch. She did not like Casimir touching her. Casimir leaned forward and whispered into Emily's ear, Bon appétit. Thinking that Emily and Casimir were a couple, Michael looked like an abandoned puppy. Casimir noticed his cousin's reaction and smiled inwardly. If Michael thought that he and Emily were together, he would not try to pursue her. Don't touch me, Emily snapped at Casimir. She barely stopped herself from elbowing him. Wallowing in self-pity and lost in thought, Michael did not notice Emily's reaction. Casimir smiled and took off his hand. He whispered into her ear again. I heard that you want to start your own business. If so, Versacorp will be your first business partner. Emily looked at Casimir in surprise. How did he know about this matter? Regardless, Casimir's offer was very tempting. It was hard to turn down. Deal, Emily said upon coming back to her senses. Good, Casimir said casually. Let's talk about it later. Now Michael is with us. Speaking of Michael, Emily lowered her voice so that the aforementioned would not hear her. What's your relationship with him? Why do you care about him so much? He's my cousin, Casimir answered frankly. He knew that Emily was smart. It was only a matter of time before she found out the truth. So what was the point of hiding it from her? Oh, Emily blurted. Now things started to make sense to her. Waiter, Michael called out a bit too loudly. Hearing that, Casimir and Emily wrapped up their side conversation and turned their eyes back to Michael. Michael looked at them apologetically. He knew he shouldn't have disturbed their conversation, but he couldn't control himself. Why has no one come to take our order yet? Michael grumbled when a waiter walked up to their table. Michael's reaction again reminded Emily of Casimir when he was young. He used to act the same when she and Scarlet did not pay attention to him. Cousin. Emily looked at Michael and then looked at Casimir. Although she never liked Casimir, she did not feel the same way about his cousin. The food soon arrived. Emily had pasta, while Michael and Casimir had a steak. Emily ate elegantly. One could tell in an instant that she was born into wealth. 
It was not the same with Casimir. Although he had come such a long way and worked on himself a lot, he could not match Emily's natural grace. The three of them were overly quiet while having their lunch. None wanted to break the silence for one reason or another. When they left the restaurant, Michael went back to the company while Casimir and Emily returned to the car. Casimir drove her to her place. When they got there, he got out of the car first and opened the door for her. Emily looked at Casimir with a faint smile. Do you want to come in? Despite saying that, Emily's words were not very inviting. Another day, Casimir said confidently. So be it, Emily said politely. I look forward to working with Foster Corporation, Casimir said sincerely. And I hope you'll put in a good word on my behalf. I don't have much say in these matters, Emily muttered. I do not get involved in the family business. Emily had no interest in promoting cooperation between VersaCorp and Foster Corporation. Of course, if they were talking about cooperating with Steel Enterprises, her response would have been entirely different. Working with VersaCorp could be an option, only if she was certain that working with Steel Enterprises was not. I've heard that your family trusts you and listens to your counsel, Casimir said as he walked with Emily to the door of her family's villa. I have some work to do, and I'm not in the habit of discussing official business at my doorstep, Emily said impatiently. You're really stubborn, Casimir gave Emily a smug look. Thinking about what Casimir had done to her in the morning, Emily promised herself that she would make him pay one day for bullying her. As if reading her mind, Casimir took out an exquisite gift box from his pocket. I offended you today, Casimir admitted. So I brought you this gift to make up for it. Without waiting for Emily's reply, Casimir stuffed the jewelry box into Emily's hand and returned to his car. Emily looked at the jewelry box in her hands. Then, without even checking what was inside, she handed it to the maid who opened the box. Here you go. This is for you. Emily couldn't believe that Casimir had the gall to think that he could buy her forgiveness with some glittering bauble. What was wrong with him? When Emily stepped inside, she found her parents waiting for her. They had serious expressions on their faces. Emily frowned. What happened? Why are you looking at me like that? She asked. She had never seen her father, Logan Foster, so upset before. Where were you last night? Logan asked. Why didn't you come back home? Emily's mother, Hannah, spoke before her daughter could say anything. You really messed up this time, Emily. What are you guys talking about? Emily asked impatiently. Come inside. We need to talk. Logan spoke to Emily as if she had made an unforgivable mistake. Logan snorted. I can't believe I still have to go through this crap, even though I'm an adult. Entering the living room, Emily saw her grandfather, Hugh Foster, sitting on the sofa. Immediately, she went over to greet him. Even though Emily did not like her parents, she loved her grandfather. Hugh Foster was one of the few people left in Emily's family with actual talent. Not only did he possess a sharp mind, but he also had plenty of experience. There were many things Emily wanted to learn from him. Another thing that set Hugh apart from the rest of his family was that he did not care about material things, or at least no longer did. Emily, I have something to tell you, Hugh said with a heavy tone. When Emily heard that, she became anxious. She wondered what had happened. Tell me, what happened? Emily said anxiously. Don't pretend to be innocent, Logan pointed his finger at her. Calm yourself, Logan. Hugh bellowed. He always wished his son would show more restraint. Seeing that Emily had her grandfather's protection, Logan turned to his wife. Hannah, what do you have to say about your daughter's behavior? This is your fault. Emily crossed her arms over her chest. She still did not understand what had happened. Logan, don't be angry in front of your father, Hannah murmured as she tried to hold his hand. Get lost. Logan snarled as he shook off Hannah's hand. Emily couldn't help feeling a bit sorry for her. She pitied her for living with such a bore, even though she knew that it was her mother's fault for putting up with him. 
You're the one who needs to get lost, Hugh growled at his son. Logan turned toward Hugh. Seeing the angry expression on his father's face, Logan decided not to stay around any longer. He gave Emily one more angry look and stormed out of the room. Looking at his timid daughter-in-law, Hugh spoke softly. Can you please give us a moment, Hannah? I want to speak with Emily alone. Once Hannah left, Emily felt relieved and looked at her grandfather with grateful eyes. He always had her back. Come sit next to me, Hugh murmured. Let's talk. Emily walked up to her grandfather without hesitation. He was the only one in the family who always had her back. If it weren't for him, she would have run off a long time ago. Emily, I have wronged you all these years, Hugh said with a stuttering voice that carried a trace of self-blame. Grandpa, what are you talking about? Emily asked as she leaned on his shoulder, just like she used to do when she was young. Hugh patted Emily's shoulder. He really liked his granddaughter, but he felt that he had not done enough for her. I didn't leave anything for you, Hugh said regretfully. You've always been there for me, Emily spoke from her heart. That's more valuable to me than anything. Emily did not care that she did not have more stake or control over Foster Corporation. She was confident in her ability to carve her own path. She wanted to be a self-made woman. I know you're the most sensible one in the family, and I know that you've grown up. Hugh continued. Grandpa, if there's something you want to tell me, just say it. Emily smiled. There's no need to lay so much groundwork. At that moment, Emily reminded Hugh of Catherine. Look at the front page of today's newspaper. Hugh said as he picked up the newspaper on the coffee table in front of the sofa and handed it to Emily. When Emily flipped open the newspaper and looked at the picture on the front page, her eyes widened in disbelief. <gasps> this is impossible, she seethed. Who wrote this? Grandpa, th this story, it's all lies. Emily looked at her grandfather, helpless. I believe you, Hugh said after a long pause. But tell me, what is your relationship with Casimir Graves? Emily bit her lower lip tightly. Casimir hates me. This is why he did this. A trace of surprise flashed across Hugh's eyes. Why did Casimir Graves hold a grudge against his granddaughter? Just as he was trying to figure that out, the butler entered the room. He was holding the jewelry box that Casimir had brought for her, the same one she gave to the maid. This made matters complicated. How was Emily going to explain this? When the butler handed the jewelry box to Hugh, a defeated expression appeared on Emily's face. How was she going to explain this to her grandfather? If Casimir really hated her, as she had told him, why was he giving her gifts? Do you mind me opening it? Hugh asked his granddaughter. Emily smiled helplessly. It's fine. You can open it. To her surprise, Hugh handed the jewelry box back to Emily, and a warm smile appeared on his face. This is for you. I cannot open it. Emily wished she had thrown the gift away instead of giving it to the maid, but it was too late now. She had to open it to gain her grandfather's trust. She had to show him she had nothing to hide. Opening the jewelry box in her hand, Emily saw it was a diamond necklace. As Emily picked up the necklace, she saw a small piece of paper under it. Emily looked at the piece of paper and frowned. Her grandfather had noticed the paper as well. Emily did not know what was written on it, but had no choice but to read it. Under Hugh's attentive gaze, Emily picked up the paper to read it. There were only a couple of lines written on it. I just wanted to show you that last night was special for me too. I will never forget it. Under different circumstances, Emily would have accepted the message with a smile. But considering it was written by Casimir after what he had done to her yesterday, she wanted nothing more than to tear this paper to pieces and throw the necklace in the trash. Emily blamed herself for being in this situation. 
She should not have underestimated Casimir. She should have been more vigilant. Hearing Hugh cough a couple of times, Emily was pulled back to her senses. Hugh thought that there was more to his granddaughter's relationship with Casimir than she was letting on. The necklace and the written message wouldn't make sense otherwise. He thought that Casimir really had feelings for Emily. Furthermore, Emily's story didn't even make sense. She claimed that Casimir hated her. How could that be true when Emily had just come back to L.A. a few days ago? The whole thing seemed less like hatred and more like love at first sight. Not knowing how to explain herself, Emily looked dejected. Um, Grandpa, I want to go back to my room. Hugh nodded and did not say anything else. He understood that Emily needed some space. He was sure that she would explain the situation to him when she was ready. Returning to her room, Emily lay on the bed. She felt drained. This time, she was completely defeated. When she thought about the newspaper headline announcing that she was in a relationship with Casimir, Emily felt her blood boil. Annoyed, Emily pounded the bed and covered her face with a pillow. She promised herself that she would make Casimir pay for this. First, though, she had to find out Casimir's true goal. Emily knew that Casimir was in love with Scarlet. Whatever he was doing had to do with getting her. Emily couldn't let him succeed. Scarlet was the only real friend in her life. She could not let Casimir take her away. The more she thought about this situation, the more tired she became. Later on, Emily fell asleep. When she woke up, it was dark. Checking her phone, she found out that she had been asleep for ten hours. She felt really hungry, but she was too depressed to go to the kitchen to get something to eat. Instead, she stayed in bed, thinking dark thoughts about Casimir, until she fell asleep again. When Emily woke up again the next day, she quickly left her room and went downstairs to the living room. Over there, she saw Hugh reading a newspaper. Emily was afraid that there was more bad news. Noticing that Emily had come out of her room, Hugh motioned her to come and sit next to him. Emily's original plan was to sneak out of the house. However, after her grandfather had seen her, she had no choice but to stay for breakfast. Emily, read what the newspaper is saying, Hugh said as he handed the paper to her. Emily went over the article talking about her. Apparently, her trip yesterday to Versacorp with Casimir was taken as a sign that she was in a serious relationship with him. The article also claimed that Versacorp would start working with Foster Corporation. Emily was furious. Casimir must have planned this all along. Grandpa, I told you this newspaper is full of crap, Emily said angrily. Hugh's expression eased a little. He knew that Emily would never make such big moves on her own without consulting him first. It seems that Casimir is quite determined. He really wants you, Hugh said meaningfully. Grandpa, what are you talking about? Emily shook her head. I told you that Casimir hates me. How could it be hatred? Hugh voiced his doubts. You two have not known each other for long. Actually, I... Emily paused mid-sentence. She could have mentioned that she had known him since they were young, but she wasn't sure her grandfather would believe her. You don't have to explain it, Hugh said. I don't know how to, Emily said as she slumped in her chair. Hugh reached out and held Emily's hand. In any case, I want you to know that you always have my support. Although Hugh had nothing against Casimir, his granddaughter would always come first. Grandpa, I promise to explain everything to you later, Emily assured him. No matter how powerful or cunning Casimir was, she would prove her innocence. Casimir might have won the battle, but Emily was determined that he would not win the war. Though Emily had not lost hope of getting payback, she had lost her appetite. She couldn't get herself to eat breakfast. She felt the urge to go out and do something. Grandpa, I'm going out for a while, Emily told her grandfather. Emily, I can see you are emotional right now, Hugh said calmly. 
Perhaps you should wait a bit before making any decisions. Grandpa, I cannot let anyone get away with taking advantage of me, Emily said firmly. Seeing the determined look in her eyes, Hugh just nodded. He decided it was best to let Emily go. Emily wasted no time. She went to the garage, picked one of the flashiest sports cars, and drove straight toward the offices of the L.A. Tribune. She could not retaliate against Casimir for the time being. However, the same could not be said about the newspaper that published that article about her. She needed to teach them a lesson. Emily Foster was not a woman who could be slandered with impunity. When Emily walked into the offices of the L.A. Tribune, she could sense a lot of eyes following her. I want to see your editor-in-chief, Emily told the receptionist. Before the receptionist could react, Emily decided to just barge into the office of the editor-in-chief. There was no point in seeking permission from anyone. Emily walked between the cubicles and made her way straight toward the editor-in-chief's office. When she got there, she did not bother knocking on the door first and just pushed it open. She then walked in and sat in the opposite chair, the editor-in-chief, before throwing the newspaper in her hand on his desk. I want an explanation, Emily said curtly, with neither introduction nor greeting. The portly man recognized Emily instantly, and there was fear in his eyes. He was afraid that something like this would happen when he conspired with Casimir. How dare you publish such an article without corroborating it, Emily said sharply. Miss Foster, we had reliable... The man started to explain before Emily cut him off. The Fosters are not to be trifled with. I have the resources to get you fired, Emily said threateningly. The editor-in-chief knew that was not an empty threat. Don't be angry. Give me a chance to explain. The man wiped the sweat on his forehead with a napkin. I don't need an explanation. I want a retraction, Emily stated. Miss Foster, this takes time to arrange, the man complained. It is not easy. No one said it is, but you will do it, Emily commanded. The editor-in-chief had never been in a situation like that before. This was the first time he felt that his job was really on the line. Let's be reasonable. Why don't we talk about this over a cup of coffee? The man suggested. There's no need to chat about anything. Emily shrugged him off. Then how do you want me to make things right? The editor-in-chief asked. It seems to me that you're being glib, Emily said without mincing her words. If you can't make a decision, I'll replace you with someone who can. I, the man stammered. If you need Casimir to give you the green light, I can call him right now, Emily suggested. She had already guessed that he was the one behind this. Without waiting for the man's response, Emily took out her phone and dialed Casimir's number. Miss Foster, Casimir said jovially. It's good to hear from you. Director Graves, do you know where I am now? Emily's voice was very stiff. I don't like guessing games. Casimir replied with a smile. You're familiar with L.A. Tribune, aren't you? Emily inquired. Haven't heard of him. Casimir answered without so much as blinking. Well then, have you read today's newspaper? What newspaper? Casimir smirked. You mean L.A. Tribune? Listen, Director Graves, I'm not in the mood to play games, Emily said impatiently. You crossed a red line yesterday. Miss Foster, it seems there is a misunderstanding, Casimir said, maintaining his calm. Why don't we find some time to talk about this in person? Sure. Come then to the offices of the L.A. Tribune. We can sit down and talk. Emily revealed a sinister smile. I'm afraid that wouldn't be a good place to talk, Casimir said. How about we meet at a restaurant or a cafe? No, Emily declined. I like this place. If you want to talk... Come here quickly. Without waiting for Casimir's reply, Emily hung up the phone. Miss Foster, please meet with Director Graves elsewhere. This is not a suitable place to meet, the editor-in-chief pleaded meekly. You should be more concerned about the lawsuit you're facing for slandering me, Emily suggested. 
I've just sent my lawyer a message. He's also on the way here. Ah, oh, Miss Foster, there's no need to make any hasty decisions. The editor-in-chief mumbled. Time is money, especially to businessmen, Emily said firmly. I do not want to waste too much time on this matter. I want to get this over with as soon as possible. Soon, Emily's lawyer arrived. The editor-in-chief went pale the moment he saw him. This wasn't any lawyer. It was Nathan Levin. That man was legendary. There was no lawsuit he couldn't win. Miss Foster, the lawyer greeted Emily respectfully. Mr. Levin, long time no see. Emily stood up to greet her lawyer. As the editor-in-chief watched them exchange formalities, someone knocked on his office door. Who was it now? The person standing outside the door was none other than Casimir. He had a calm expression on his face. It was as if this whole debacle had nothing to do with him. Under the gazes of the three people, Casimir walked in and looked at Emily with a smile that was not a smile. I didn't expect you wanted to talk about yesterday's article, Casimir said casually and stared straight at Emily. The editor-in-chief of the L.A. Tribune looked at Casimir as if he didn't know anything. Nathan looked at Casimir openly. The whole situation was a little awkward. As for Emily's face, she was trying her best to seem relaxed. Mr. Levin, let Director Graves read the newspaper, Emily said to Nathan. Nathan took out two newspapers from his briefcase. They were yesterday's newspaper and today's. Then he handed them to Casimir with a serious expression. Director Graves, take a look, Nathan said as he handed the newspaper to Casimir. Casimir took the newspaper and read it quickly. He then folded the newspaper and put it away. He looked up at Emily as if he had nothing to do with the article. Miss Foster, did you call me here just to show me this? Casimir did not care about the contents of the newspaper at all. Emily snorted. Ah, you act as if you don't care about what is said in there. That's because I don't, Casimir said without missing a beat. Why should I care? It's all drivel. After saying this, the editor-in-chief looked at Casimir nervously. He wondered if Casimir would help him out or throw him under the bus. I'll sue this newspaper for libel. Emily looked at the editor-in-chief as she spoke. Casimir looked at Emily as if he was saying, What does this have to do with me? He did not take the matter seriously at all. This is my lawyer, Emily continued. Since you just said this article is drivel, I look forward to hearing you say that in front of a jury when this case goes to court. When the editor-in-chief heard this, he immediately panicked and wanted to interrupt. Casimir, however, motioned him to remain quiet. Casimir smiled at Emily. Hmm, Miss Foster, I'm not a fan of the judicial system here. I don't want to testify in court. Emily had expected that Casimir would say something along these lines. After all, he did not want evidence of his collusion with L.A. Tribune to come to light. It's fine. If you don't want to be called to testify, then you can issue a public statement clarifying the situation. Nathan smiled. Of course, I'd be happy to do so, Casimir said, returning Nathan's smile. Once they reached an agreement, everyone seemed to relax a bit, except for the editor-in-chief. He was still worried that Casimir would turn on him. Miss Foster, is there nothing else? I still have a meeting to attend, Casimir said as he looked at his watch. Emily smiled politely. Thank you for coming here on such short notice. She was sure that Casimir had gotten the message. Emily Foster was not someone to be trifled with. After Casimir left, Emily's gaze turned to the editor-in-chief, whom she had been ignoring for a while. See? Director Graves also thinks you guys are not telling the truth, Emily said calmly. You should think twice before you write anything about me. With that said, Emily left alongside her lawyer. She had achieved her goal. There was no point in continuing to waste time here. As soon as Emily left, the editor-in-chief picked up his phone and called Casimir. Director Graves, you must help me. You cannot leave me to deal with Emily Foster on my own the man pleaded. 
Don't worry. It's not a big deal, Casimir said. Libel cases are difficult to win. And if she manages to do so, all you'd have to do is pay some money and issue a public apology. The newspaper might sack me for this, the man stammered. No matter what kind of losses you suffer, I'll make it up to you twice, Casimir assured. Whether the editor-in-chief heard this, he felt much more at ease. Ah, oh, thank you, Director Graves, he said gratefully. Sure, Casimir said. Now that this matter has been settled, do not call me again. Without waiting for him to say anything, Casimir hung up. Even though he might end up losing some money, Casimir was happy with how things turned out. The rumor was now out that he and Emily were seeing each other. No retraction, lawsuit, or public statement would change that. The corner of Casimir's mouth curled into a cold smile. However, the show had just begun, and this matter had to be hyped up. The story had to go viral to ensure that Scarlet heard about it. Meanwhile, Emily was eating some desserts with her lawyer at a cafe. Mr. Levin, this souffle is really good, isn't it? Emily asked with a smile. It is. Nathan agreed. Nathan Levin was Hugh's close friend, and he was fond of Emily. Emily, in turn, respected him deeply. He was the closest person to her after her grandfather. While the two were eating and chatting, Nathan's expression suddenly changed. He said to Emily in a serious manner, Emily, it's best if you don't antagonize Casimir. Nathan was worried that Emily would lose against such a scheming man. I'm not the one antagonizing him, Emily explained. He's the one antagonizing me. I've heard you're planning to start your own company. Nathan changed the topic. Is that true? Yes, Emily nodded. And I'll need your help when it is time to register the company. Nathan nodded. I'll help you the best I can. Emily smiled. She felt everything was going her way. But was that truly the case? At the Foster's house, the sound of children playing could be heard throughout the entire house, and the living room was full of people. When Emily returned home and saw the chaos in front of her, she rubbed her eyes and sighed. She felt as if she had just arrived at an amusement park. Emily did not communicate with anyone as she entered the house. She did not feel close to anyone in her family except her grandfather, whom she did not see. She figured out that he must have retreated to his study, and she went there to see him. Pushing open the door of the study room, Emily was surprised to see Scarlet there alongside her grandfather. What was her friend doing in her grandfather's study? Had she read the article about her in the L.A. Tribune? If so, how was she going to explain things to her? Emily! Scarlet smiled warmly. Scarlet! Emily smiled back, though she could not stop her mouth from twitching. Hugh smiled brightly. They were just talking about Catherine Steele. When he was young, he was deeply in love with Catherine, but she chose Arthur over him. Despite that, Hugh never stopped missing her. Did I disturb you guys? Emily asked. She just wanted to find an excuse to slip away. Not at all, Hugh said. Scarlet hasn't been here for a long time. She must stay over for lunch. Hugh always had a soft spot for Scarlet. Emily sighed inwardly. She was hoping Scarlet would leave so she could leave as well. Now that Scarlet was going to stay over for lunch, Emily had no choice but to do the same. Hugh wrapped his arm around Emily's shoulder and patted her. You must be very happy to hear that, Hugh said with a bright smile. Of course, Emily responded, though she wished she had not come back home. Now, I have some work to take care of, Hugh said. You can go with Scarlet and catch up. When the two women left Hugh's study, Scarlet turned to Emily and smiled. It's been a long time since I last saw your grandfather. He's so sweet. To Emily's surprise, Scarlet did not ask her immediately about the newspaper article. He's sweet because he likes you. Emily smiled coyly. Scarlet walked up to Emily abruptly and sniffed. I smell something, Scarlet said after a long pause. Emily, you're hiding something from me, aren't you? 
Emily tried to act as if she had no idea what Scarlet was talking about. She did not know how much Scarlet knew, so there was no need to show all her cards just yet. What are you talking about? Why would I hide from you? Emily felt a bit guilty about hiding things from her friend. When they were young, they promised each other never to hide anything from each other. We're no longer children, Scarlet smiled. I'm sure there are plenty of things you hide from me. This day finally came. The vows they made when they were young could no longer be counted on. Right, we've all grown up, Emily said with a hint of sadness in her voice. If there are things you're not ready to share, that's fine, Scarlet said softly. But I want you to know you can always trust me. Seeing Scarlet reveal her true feelings, Emily was momentarily speechless. She knew that her own feelings were far from being as pure as Scarlet's. She really did not want to lose her as a friend. I came here today to bring you some cookies I baked, Scarlet said warmly. When I saw Hugh, he insisted I come inside. He talked to me about Catherine. It makes me think that the relationship between the Steels and the Fosters can be restored. Scarlet's words made Emily let out a small sigh of relief. So Scarlet wasn't here to talk to her about Casimir. Yes, I think so too, Emily said happily. And I'm willing to do my part. Reaching out to hold Scarlet's hand, Emily noticed that Scarlet was holding a newspaper. Seeing that, Emily became stiff, and her smile froze. Scarlet followed Emily's gaze and looked at her left hand. She then raised the newspaper so that Emily could see it. Emily, why did you hide this from me? Uh, I'm sorry, Emily blurted. I don't know how to explain it to you. I hope you can trust me. Were these photos photoshopped? Is that really you? Scarlet asked. There were a lot of question marks in her eyes. Emily did not reply. Her head was quickly thinking about how to respond. When I came here, I was surprised to see this newspaper, Scarlet said bitterly. I can't believe that the person in these pictures is you. Scarlet could not believe that Emily had lied to her. She told her that she had only met Casimir once, but they were clearly dating. Scarlet couldn't get over this. Why did Emily lie to her? Emily looked at her friend. She couldn't believe that her friendship with Scarlet was again on the line because of Casimir. It's not what it looks like, Emily explained. Casimir! Emily's words trailed off. Scarlet tightly hugged Emily. Did he force you? If he did, you can't let him get away with it. Emily coughed twice. No, it wasn't like that. But the L.A. Tribune story is still just rubbish. Are you sure he didn't force you? Scarlet asked. Scarlet, nothing happened between Casimir and me. I was just drunk and slept in his house. Photos of us were taken by paparazzi, and the newspaper spun a tale around it. Emily explained. Scarlet looked at Emily doubtfully. Emily was not the kind of person who would get drunk and sleep at a stranger's house. She felt there was more to the story than her friend was letting on. I believe you, Scarlet said, despite the doubts that lingered in her heart. I won't ask you any more about this. Emily heaved a sigh of relief and smiled. Her friendship with Scarlet was important to her. She was glad that her friend did not keep asking her about this. Actually... I'm going to sue the L.A. Tribune for writing this article about me, Emily said as she took the newspaper from Scarlet's hand and threw it in the trash. Good for you, Scarlet said supportively. But why did you go on a date with Casimir? And why did you go to his house drunk? Scarlet couldn't stop herself from asking. There were several things in Emily's story that did not add up. I don't know where to start, Emily said honestly. If you don't want to talk about it, that's fine, Scarlet said. But what about the article claiming the meeting at VersaCorp revolved around the company's investment in Sanders Holding? Is that true? Emily saw another newspaper on the desk. It showed her sitting beside Casimir during the meeting with the board of directors at VersaCorp. Emily sighed. Ugh, all right, I'll explain it all from the beginning. 
I contacted Casimir to discuss opportunities for VersaCorp and Foster Corporation to work together. During that meeting, I drank too much without paying attention. And the topic of Sanders holding came up. Emily explained, while Scarlet nodded to show that she was listening attentively. The next day, when I woke up, Casimir told me that he was going to talk about his company's investment in Sanders Holding during a board meeting. He asked me if I'd be interested in attending that meeting. Because this matter concerns you, I accepted. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Scarlet lowered her head. When she heard Emily's words, she felt a little guilty. She thought that Emily had gotten into this situation because she had asked Casimir for help on her behalf. That would explain why Sanders Holding lost Casimir's support over the past few days. Although Scarlet still did not fully believe Emily's story, she was sure that Casimir withdrawing his support of Harold had to be Emily's influence. You didn't have to do this for me, Scarlet said sincerely. Ah, don't mention it. And don't look at me like that, Emily said. Believe me, nothing happened between Casimir and me. Besides, I did not get in touch with Casimir for your sake, but for my family's. I wish Foster Corporation would partner with Steel Enterprises. But as long as our grandparents cannot settle their differences, working with VersaCorp would be the best way for Foster Corporation to expand in the U.S. market. I believe you. But you were drunk that day. Are you sure you remember everything that happened? Scarlet probed. I may be hazy on the details, but I'm certain I did not sleep with Casimir, Emily said firmly. Scarlet nodded and did not ask any more questions. She was grateful for everything Emily did for her. She hoped that one day she'd be able to return the favor. When Scarlet and Emily went downstairs, they bumped into Emily's elder brother, Linus. Linus gave Scarlet a dirty look, which made Emily glare at him. Emily did not like her family in general, but she really hated Linus. When Scarlet and Emily then sat around the dining table, Linus gave his sister a beaming smile. Emily, I brought a friend with me today that I'd like you to meet. Linus was always trying to set up Emily with one of his pervy friends. Fed up with her brother's attitude, Emily sprang up and pulled Scarlet up with her. Since Linus has brought another one of his friends, I'd say let's leave our seats for him. What was up to Emily?